Last week's vote against a ceasefire in Gaza was a low moment in Westminster in the face of thousands upon thousands of civilian deaths in Gaza, all perpetrated by a government spouting genocidal rhetoric. Both Labour and the Tories decided to support Israel's war. Many constituents are upset about that. There were protests outside Keir Starmer's constituency office in Camden over the weekend, and another MP, Labour's Joe Stevens, had her office vandalised with red paint. On the BBC on Sunday, Rachel Reeves had this to say about the protests and the ceasefire vote. I was really sorry to see colleagues resign last week from the front bench. But being leader and hopefully next year prime minister, Keir is going to have to make incredibly difficult decisions and he's going to have to do what he thinks is right and offer that leadership even in difficult uh, times and there will be difficult decisions if we form the next uh, government but that's what leadership is all about. What I find very concerning is the huge pressure that MPs have been put on both leading up to the vote but also what we've seen this week. I support the right to protest. Suella Braverman's comments about these being hate marches etc are appalling but I don't support the intimidation of members of parliament. Of course, I- intimidation of members of parliament would be wrong. We are, though, I think, in danger of shifting into a moral panic about the most basic levels of accountability. Now, this was Alistair Campbell speaking on the weekend. I think there's something very, very strange about this. There's nobody in the world that doesn't want the violence to stop and doesn't want the bombing to stop. There's nobody that, that just is really happy about that. So, for example, the Green Party doing that huge social media campaign they did, listing all the Labour MPs and saying, these people, if you want to know the people who voted to keep the bombing going, there's a nastiness to the whole thing. And I just I just think that for Labour, just we, we, we've got such short memories in this country. Joe Cox, I'm doing a memorial lecture for Joe Cox later this week. Uh, David Amos, two MPs got killed. And you now see a situation because MPs are doing what, you know, they're paid to do, which is represent, in, take part in votes. Yes, follow the line sometimes from the party. But then to see, I, Rushan Ali, who's a very, very good MP, thousands of people outside her marching on her offices. Keir Starmer, whether people like him or they don't like him, he's entitled to a private life, he's entitled to a family life, to have people... And we had this during the Iraq war. People turning up outside our house protesting, and I think Rachel's absolutely right. Protest is fine. Trying to intimidate people and silence them is wrong. So there has been one report of a protest outside an MP's house. It was in the Daily Mail. The MP was not named. In any case, I, you know, I, I, if it has happened, I don't think protesting outside an MP's home is a, is a good idea. Um, notably, though, Campbell went a lot further, and he seemed to have a problem with even listing which MPs voted against a ceasefire as the Green Party did. Now, this was the Green Party post on social media, which Campbell finds so unpleasant. I mean, it's odd he finds that so concerning because MPs' voting records are online Anyway, publicising voting records seems to me like a pretty basic tenet of democracy. It's also odd because Alistair Campbell has quite recently done exactly the same thing. In 2019, Campbell, who has three times as many followers as the Green Party, published this list of every Labour MP who failed to vote for a second referendum on Brexit. That list was published three years after the murder of Joe Cox, which, according to Campbell's own argument, means he should have known better, right? He's saying that's the context in which the Green Party tweeted this and that's very problematic. Well, he did the same thing. Campbell has also encouraged constituents to go and personally protest individual MPs. After Kwasi Kwarteng delivered his economy-collapsing mini-budget last September, he said this, if you have a Tory MP, find out where they are this weekend and make sure they know what you think of what happened today, especially if you voted for them, because you believe they were serious about levelling up. This nonsense can be changed, but only if those MPs go back to Westminster and change the minds of the people at the top. Now, that tweet there was published less than a year after the murder of David Amos, which Campbell mentioned again in his Sky interview. Um, So very disingenuous from Alistair Campbell. I think, you know, also that panel, it was a former advisor to David Cameron, Alistair Campbell, and then I think she was, well, she was a senior editor of The Economist now of Politico, Anne McElvoy, who's you know, nodding along like this is all completely common sense. That no one wants to continue the bombing. No one wants to continue the bombing. Guess who wants to continue the bombing? The Israeli government, because they want to make Gaza unlivable. And then it seems that there are lots of people in the world with lots of power who are very willing to let them continue to do that. The idea that everyone wants to stop the bombing, we just disagree on how to do it. 
yes, some people want the bombing to stop when everyone has been either killed or driven out of Gaza. That's some, yeah, no, 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 one is, no one is suggesting we bomb Gaza forever. The question is, at what point do you stop bombing? Do you stop bombing it while there are still some people alive? Maybe? Because it doesn't seem like Israel is too, too, too keen to do that. Um, David, I want to ask you, you know, this happens all the time, these conversations, sort of like the, the safety of MPs. Are, are, are they being intimidated? And I mean, it is important to know, like there are two MPs who have been violently killed um, in, in this country since 2016. So I don't, I don't think it's unreasonable for MPs to sort of have concerns about their safety at all. Um, I also don't think, you know, like protesting outside people's houses is a good idea. You know, their family will be there or their family might be there. But what Alistair Campbell said, there was sort of like thousands of people marching outside Roshana Ali's constituency office. And for me, you know, thousands of people on a demo makes it a more legitimate demo, whereas he seems to be annoyed that so many people turned up to this demo. I'm your Latin American correspondent, but I'm also your friend from uh, from the United States. And there's something that just reeks of a certain British sensitivity to how dare they, you know, make us uncomfortable, you know, the nastiness of accountability. And I think it's obviously not a surprise that it's Alistair Campbell who's making a comparison to uh, to the Iraq war and, and trying to sort of absolve uh, himself in the process of absolving uh, Keir Starmer of his own personal responsibility for the ongoing uh, unfolding genocide in Gaza. I, I personally I personally don't see any problem with protesting anywhere. A peaceful protest is a peaceful protest. We need to be mindful of the tactics and the language. And of course, uh, you know, making sure that any protest that we are uh, endorsing or participating in is, you know, not design, designed, whatever is designed with the spirit of um, civility in the in the broad sense of towards a specific political goal. Uh, but the idea that it's not legitimate to be raising voices. And I'm, I'm also nervous about leaning too far into their idea of what counts as intimidation, because the line between intimidation and accountability is so thin. And of course, we're not talking about cuts to health or cuts to education. We're talking about the uh, murder of over 3,000 children. These are life and death circumstances, not hypothetical life and death circumstances. These are literal life and death circumstances. So the whole thing, it feels very, um, you know, uh, sort of not just sad uh, and pathetic, but also deeply, deeply cynical. The idea that citizens, uh, you know, it's very, it's very American also in the sense of like, you know, use your, use your vote at the ballot box. Don't tell us what to do as, as your MPs. And I think that that goes generally to this idea that Keir Starmer, you know, is going to have to make difficult decisions, which has been their line on every unpopular uh, policy position they've been taking over the past few years. And the goal is to try to have as much latitude as possible to create certain circumstances in which they ever have to say that they, they did something wrong, they don't ever have to admit fault, uh, and they don't ever have to bow to public pressure, because if, they're, if the public is with them, then that shows how great they are. That suggests how much virtue they have. But if the public is against them, that shows how brave they are, how courageous it is to take a position that's deeply unpopular in the name of what speaks to them in their heart. So all of these positions are ways to deflect from basic democratic mechanisms of accountability. For that reason, I find them so particularly enraging. Thank you for that. We have a message for you before we move on. Navarra Media are readying ourselves for 2024. We want to expand our capacity to report on the issues that matter to you and people who watch and listen to this show. Um, we're working really hard to bring you the coverage that the mainstream media consistently fails to provide. Um, and lots of you are tuning in. Um, to join the people who fund our journalism, um, do head to navarramedia.com forward slash support. Um, you can donate anything from just one pound per month. A regular donation of any amount really does help us to plan further into the future, um, sort of further enrich our content and hopefully expand our reach. Um, so that's navaramedia.com forward slash support. If you are already a subscriber, thank you so, so much. Um, if you aren't one already, please consider becoming one.